NASCAR heads out to Coda, but was it a banger or a snoozer? Plus, there's some interesting rumors floating around in the garage, including one former Cup star back in the Cup Series part-time, but it's not who you think. Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your flag. Hell yeah! What's the caution for? Mason, I know. Push it in. Stop it, buddy. Woo! Yeah! Come on, he's going. Woo! Way to go, boys. One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Thank you so much. Oh, it was a banger of a weekend in the world of motorsports. Kind of, sort of, kind of. We're going to talk about everything that happened in the world of motorsports, particularly the world of NASCAR. But just to kind of recap what happened, NASCAR went out to Coda for a triple header, the only truck series road course of the 2024 season. IndyCar went to the Thermal Club, which apparently is a thing, an hour outside of Los Angeles that nobody went to and put on a show. NHRA was out in Pomona, but guess what? They got the NASCAR treatment. It hailed on them, so they're going to run the remaining finals elsewhere. It's a whole thing. And, oh, by the way, Formula uh, had that guy that keeps winning that his name shall not be mentioned on this program uh, blow an engine, and it made for literally the only decent F1 race that we will see for the next three years. Stay hot, F1. Oh, but before we get into everything, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And you can also log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. No time like the present. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. The big story, the fact that William Byron and Hendrick Motorsports got it done out at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, the F1 purpose-built track that NASCAR took over four years ago for one date in March. And so far, pretty decent racing out there. The drivers like it. The fans like it. Very modern facility. But unfortunately, we only saw two cautions, and they were for stage breaks. And other than that, kind of a snoozer out there in Texas. This track is very wide, it's very big, and we saw very eh racing. I will give you this. In that third stage, a lot of people were upset about this. I was not. We saw a legitimate battle with different strategies. You had Christopher Bell, who was on an interesting two-stop strat, basically pitting only when he needed fuel. And you had William Byron and 99% of the field that pitted at the end of the stage breaks. And inevitably, it meant that Christopher Bell had fresher tires in the closing laps, but was held up by his teammate for maybe a lap or two longer than he should have been. And that resulted in William Byron getting the victory by about seven tenths. You're telling me that Ty Gibbs couldn't have pulled over and given Christopher Bell second? I'm just saying, Gibbs right now are strangling that kid right now, trying to knock some sense into him. They've gone full Bart Simpson on him. And I can't blame them. They should be because they cost straight up. Ty Gibbs just cost Christopher Bell and Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota a victory at Coda. Straight up. And I'm sure the diehards and the people in uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, particularly the Ty Gibbs fans, are going to justify that. No, that kid did nothing wrong. It was fine. In NASCAR, we race every single lap like there's no tomorrow and make sure that we do our best every single... Bullshit. F it's just, just straight up. Bullshit. Like, there are team orders in NASCAR. Spingate was a thing. We all kind of forget that. And, yeah, there are instances where teammates help each other out. This was an instance where Ty Gibbs really, really, really should have been a pal and maybe pulled over a little bit, given the 20 car a little bit of a, a break in one of the 20 turns on this racetrack and just let him go see if he can track down the 24 car. Because here's the thing. Ty Gibbs, at best, was going to finish second. At worst, finish third. He ends up finishing third. But if I'm Gibbs and I'm sitting there, I'm going, you know, I'm not catching this 24 car on my own. This guy behind me is kind of decent. If he gets up there and screws with the 24, they get side by side. Maybe they take each other out. Maybe it reels me in. Maybe I get around him and get my first victory. Just saying. And then guess what didn't happen? Gibbs held him up for way longer than he should have, and William Byron wins, Christopher Bell finishes second, and Ty Gibbs finishes third. If I'm Joe Gibbs, I'm screaming at my brat grandson right now, going, what the hell, you cost us a victory! But, you know, probably not. They're probably going to just pat him on the back and go, you did your best. You did your best. It, we didn't win. We did not have a winning car today. It's okay. It, it's fine. It, it's fine. And by the way, the saga between Recky Spinhouse, I mean, Ricky 
Stenhouse and the number 50 of Kobayashi continues. Ricky spun him at Indianapolis. And once again today, or excuse me, yesterday, we saw Ricky get into that 50 car and spin him around again. And Kobayashi, to his credit, actually did end up taking Ricky with him. Uh, we didn't see a caution for that incident, but I mean... Come on, Recky. What are you doing, bud? I mean, you're just out there filling out the field anyway. Just just go ahead and don't cause drama. It's not that hard, bud. Not that hard. Fans so far kind of split and indecisive on this one. Uh, the Jeff Gluck poll not doing that great, let's just say, for this one, and I don't blame them. Uh, it was an interesting strat race right there at the end, but inevitably, that's not going to save this race. I, I do think that NASCAR does belong at Circuit of the Americas, but I think because the track is so big, because it's so wide, because there's so much room and these cars get spread out, you're not going to see the wreck fest, you're not going to see the elbows up racing um, that we would see at a Watkins Glen or um, maybe even um, the Roval, the Charlotte Roval. So overall, it wasn't a bad race. It wasn't a great race. It was a meh race, in my opinion. But all signs are pointing that NASCAR will be back at Circuit of the Americas in 2025. Um all indications from NASCAR, from the track itself, say that, yes, this is going to happen next year. It's probably going to be on the schedule for 2025, and I do believe it does belong on the schedule because Circuit of the Americas is a world-class organization, and to be frank, I think it deserves a date a hell of a lot more than another piece of crap mile and a half down in Fort Worth. No disrespect to the Fort Worth area, just the racetrack that was down there, that is down there, uh, is not that great, let's just say. And yes, in case I'm being a little too vague here, I'm talking about the Texas Motor Speedway. That track is a massive piece of shit, period. The end. And I'm not going to apologize for that. The on-track racing is garbage. The facilities, from what I understand, are fine, but not the best. So let's bulldoze it, demo it, build a new track elsewhere, or just go to Circuit of the Americas every year and let Texas have that one date, period. Speaking of older racetracks, we found out after we posted our last episode, literally like 10 seconds after it hit post and it went up, uh, that NASCAR has effectively taken over operations over at Bowman Gray Stadium. And the rumors have already started uh, spreading that, ooh, the clash is going to be here in January. Ooh, the all-star race in May will be here. Ooh. Let me tell you, you cannot run the clash in January at Bowman Gray unless you put snow tires on the thing, and even then, fans are going to freeze in the stands, period. I'm not for that idea. However, I do like the idea of us potentially seeing the All-Star race there, preferably like maybe the Thursday night before the 600, sincerely, because... Seriously, I, I'm still against an all-star race. I'm still against the clash. I'd rather see more points-paying events on the schedule. And at this point, I do believe that North Wilkesboro deserves a points-paying event. And we'll see how it is when we head down there uh, in a few weeks' time for the all-star race. That track just got repaved. I'm sure it's going to put on one hell of a show. But I, seriously, just do kind of like a end of the year, mid-season, I don't care what you call it, all-star clash, because this is just stupid. There, every week is an all-star race for these guys. Why the hell do we need a special week where we don't award points and these guys tear up equipment and spend a whole hell of a lot of money that doesn't pay points? It's just ridiculous. Pay them the points, add more tracks to the schedule, get rid of some of these second dates that don't deserve second dates, Texas, and just call Call it a day, the end. Checking the other series that raced out at Circuit of the Americas, you had Kyle Larson winning a last lap banger. And once again, the Xfinity series puts on, hands down, the best show in NASCAR. Are we confused by this? Are we even alarmed by this anymore? No, the Xfinity series is where it's at. And by the way, you can go ahead and check out uh, the Pit Pass this week uh, as it debuts. Damn, I'm getting I'm getting used to saying that again because it's been a minute. I did the show back in college and now it's making a revival as the NASCAR Xfinity Series show here on the channel. So I'm very excited to talk about Larson's win out at Circuit of the Americas. I mean, he beat a couple of really good road racers, so we'll have a lot to talk about on the show this week. Uh, and Corey Heim picked up the victory in the Truck Series, the only truck race that we will see on the road courses in 2020. 24, which sincerely made me go, huh? What? Really? Yeah, 
really. It kind of still blows me away, too. Uh, and in other really cool news, uh, Josh Williams and his wife welcomed their first uh, child into the world over the weekend. A lot of people were giving him crap for missing practice and qualifying for the birth of his child. Really, Internet? Really, NASCAR Twitter? What the hell are you talking about here? Like, things are more important than racing, period. And family is pretty much the only thing that is more important than racing. And yeah, there are instances where you get to bring your family to the racetrack and have a really great time, but sometimes you need to miss a practice or a qualifying session here or there for something that's just a little bit more important. One final piece of news that I, I don't want to say shocked me, but I, I kind of went, oh, they found the money for this one. Uh, Ty Dillon going to be taking over the number 16 cup ride for Colleg Racing for at least four races in 2024. The rumors were that Ty Dillon was supposed to take over the number 16 car full-time in 2024, but some sponsors supposedly fell through at the 11th hour, and that resulted in him going down to the Truck Series full-time in 2024, where he still struggling. Big surprise. And listen, now the check is clearing, and you too can have a cup ride. All it requires for you to do is to write a big fat check to Matt Colleague and Colleague Racing, and they'll hand over the keys to the number 16 cup ride. All you have to do is send that money to Colleg Racing now. They're a 100% desperate looking for sponsors and struggling to keep that car on the racetrack week to week so act fast and ty dillon's the latest guy to act fast so i, I don't even want to say congratulations to ty dillon because congratulations the rich kid who has a really rich grandpappy found some money from sponsors and is going to race in four cup races that i'm sure he'll be a caution in he's going to be uh starting out at texas here uh, in a few weeks' time, then heading out to New Hampshire, Richmond, and Kansas, number two, uh, in the latter half of the year. So, I, fine. I, we need some cautions, clearly. After what we saw at Circuit of the Americas, we need some natural cautions. And I'm really excited to see Ty Dillon in the field, because now that virtually guarantees some cautions in the NASCAR Cup Series. All right, so clearly I'm fired up, so let's go ahead and check out what you have to say in the comments down below. With today's hot takes, we're going to go ahead and start with this one. Chasen Jr. did not disappoint, unlike this video. Aww, thank you so much for watching and commenting. I appreciate that. And yeah, they did. I meant no disrespect towards Chase Elliott or Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm not going to diss NASCAR Jesus on this program, but they disappointed there was a big tease and the internet ran with the whole Junior's coming out of retirement to run the All-Star Race and I never for once believed that but like my hopes were, were I, gave, I gave up my hopes a little bit I was sitting there going what if he does what if he comes back and runs the All-Star Race oh my yes that would be amazing yes I want that please and then we get a <laughs> throwback announced the next day instead of junior running the all-star race i was disappointed okay and a good chunk of the internet was disappointed and i don't want to say it tainted the throwback car but it kind of tainted the throwback car so yeah it was disappointing I mean, frankly chase elliott fans aren't disappointed with how the last year and change have gone you should be disappointed because he's been racing like shit I mean, we all know it. I'm not dissing the guy. I'm just saying it's been a rough year and change for Chase Elliott fans. You can't deny that. I hope that NASCAR stays loud. I love going to my first race. It was awesome feeling the engines vibrate the stands and shake your core. Now, I'm not saying I'm against the electric car. I'm saying that I would want it to stay loud and shake you to your core. If they can keep it loud, I'm all for it. I'm 1,000% with you on this one. I couldn't agree more. It's a core feeling when you go to a racetrack to feel the engines, to feel the rumble down in your soul. I just took my niece uh, this last Friday out to the Winter Nationals, and I got that moment. Like I got, I put the earplugs on her, and we got to watch um, some really good runs, and she got that feeling. She understands it now. She's a gearhead, and I am super proud of that fact because we have definitely cracked that door open for her, and she watches F1, she watches NASCAR, and now she is a Britney Force fan, and I am okay with that. And that is a core, necessary, vital thing. There was even a moment uh, in the stands when they brought out an electric car uh, that has the kind of horsepower and the torque and the launch speed and the speeds that you see in NHRA drag racing. It's something that Ford developed. But 
it was very strange to hear the thing go. Like it was just weird. Like it was very weird because you didn't feel it. And it was almost like a blink in its, oh, oh God, it took off. Oh God, it's gone moment. And the one thing that NASCAR learned from the Garage 56 project at Le Mans last year is that fans, the the entire internet, not just American race fans, but the entire internet as a whole went, damn, that thing sounds awesome. That's cool. That is what NASCAR realized. That is what they're trying to replicate. I can guarantee you, whatever this electric car looks like from NASCAR, it will have a loud factor. We're going to feel this car coming. At least that is my hope. If the number three is retired, then the 43 needs to retire too. Nobody's talking about either one of these numbers being retired in NASCAR. Nobody. And I don't want to see a single number be retired in NASCAR. I think it's really stupid that we do that. I get the respect for a single team, but NASCAR only has 100 numbers that are readily available, 99 actually. Uh, and because of that, we can't really retire numbers. If we start doing that, we're not going to have numbers left, period. And there are certain numbers that certain teams will never touch. The 88's probably not going to be touched for a hot minute. The 28's probably not going to get touched for a minute. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I think we should run those numbers because it does keep those memories alive and it keeps those numbers going, so to speak, on the racetrack. And for that reason alone, the three and the 43 should continue to run. And frankly, if we're talking about retiring numbers, I think the 48 is a little bit more iconic than the 43 at this point and the three. I think that... Uh, frankly, many years of the three not running and Austin Dillon doing Austin Dillon things in that three car has taken that legacy and tainted it. And the 43's legacy was tainted the millisecond that NASCAR uh, started getting more serious in the 70s because, let's be honest, Richard the King Petty, in my opinion, was never the king. He was the rich kid who just showed up and raced in races where people were running station wa the family station wagon with no modifications done to it and he showed up with a purpose-built race car and simply won by default the end in my opinion richard half of richard petty's wins are simply oh well your car was the best car in the field hands down so here's a here's a trophy go away come after me in the comments i dare you Let's leave NASCAR in America. When you take races to Canada or Mexico, you're taking the money out of the hands of the communities that host the races. Americans. No. Just no. I'm not, no. I'm not going to get on this, like, high horse of, oh, keep the money in America. Because we're not. I'm sorry. The end. And... What the hell are you talking about? It's not like when NASCAR comes to town, they start writing checks and handing them out to local businesses. Oh, here we come. Here's the money for all of you. Yes, have the money, people. Come on, NASCAR's in town. That's not how it works. Period. It costs the economy money to host a NASCAR race. Yes, there is a little bit of a boost to some local businesses like hotels and restaurants, but... You're not going to see these businesses get a massive uptick because NASCAR came to town. And at this point, I don't care because simply put, there are races currently on the schedule that don't have people show up. Second Bristol date. And because of that, I think they do not deserve a race. And yes, if we go down to Mexico City and we sell out 150,000 stadium, that's worth it for me. Because it will put on a good form of racing. And here in the United States, we can continue to watch on television, which is how 90% of the audience watches anyway. 90% of us don't go to the racetrack every weekend. We watch it at home on TV. And because of that, I do think NASCAR should look at other venues and other countries. There is no doubt in my mind, Canada 1 million percent deserves at least one Cup Series date, if not two, because that is how many fans come down from Canada to the Northern races to watch NASCAR. Let's put it in their backyard and really sell out a place and put on a hell of a show in their backyard. They deserve it. Same thing with Mexico. There were so many, so many people that were coming up for the clash race and then it rained out and they couldn't come and couldn't get their tickets refunded and moved up and it was this whole calamity thing but 
it proved to me that there is an audience in Mexico for NASCAR. And I do believe that we should be racing the Cup Series down there at least once a year. So, no, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, keep it in the hands of Americans. Because that's 100% ignorant and incorrect. The end. Come after me in the comments if you want. But, yeah, I'd rather see NASCAR go to venues that actually sell out than go to a Chicago land, which did not sell out the last few races that we went there and really had abysmal attendance. Sorry, I know there's a lot of people that want to see Chicago land come back, but I'm here to tell you, ain't it gonna happen. We have a better chance at racing at Riverside than we do at Chicago land. Sorry, not sorry. All right, so now that I've come after your precious King Richard and come after your very fragile little mind about keeping money in the United States versus sending it elsewhere, you can go ahead and leave your comments down below and just skewer me if you want down below. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And of course, you can always log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I'm done. I'm, I think I've pissed off the internet enough today. I've done my job. I'm happy about that. But you can come back in a couple of days. We're going to go ahead and have the NASCAR Xfinity Series show coming out on Wednesday morning, I believe. And then we're back on Thursday with another episode of Shifting Gears. So for Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We will see you at the track.